This is a video that I've wanted to make for a few months now. Every time I told myself that I was gonna sit down and do it, I just wasn't able to. For some time now, I wanted to make this video to fill you guys in on what life has been like, where I've been at mentally, emotionally, the struggles that I've had, what I've been dealing with, and I'm still currently dealing with. I'm not usually the person that likes to really share personal things on the internet. It's just not me. But when I'm faced with times like this and I know it affects me, how I feel, how I think, how I operate, my overall mood, and that translates through what I do on the internet, then I think that it's important to at least shed light on it so that the people that enjoy my content and support me and appreciate me as a creator have a general understanding of what's going on or as to why they're not seeing me as often as they would like to. For those of you that maybe clicked on this video randomly, you're probably wondering who the heck is this guy. So if you're new here, my name is Rio and this channel predominantly focuses on men's style and men's fashion content. This video, of course, is not necessarily that. The title will probably say something like um, life update and channel update or something like that. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. I'm gonna try not to make it too, too long. Hopefully it doesn't extend anything longer than 30 minutes. So hopefully I can keep it under that. What's been going on in my life? This is a tough one to talk about. This past summer has been really, really hard. And before I go into it, I'll say this. Everyone struggles with something. So my struggles, the things that I'm talking about, I know I may not be the only one who is currently going through this or have experienced this in the past. Um, a lot of you may relate to the things that I'm talking about and maybe have already experienced these things. So maybe if you have some pointers, some things that you know can help, words of advice. I'm open to it and I would appreciate it. We'll talk about the life, where I'm at, what I've been going through, and then we'll talk about um, the channel and what I plan to do with it and how I plan to move forward with the channel. So life, mental health is something that I think is very important. I myself personally don't struggle severely with mental health, although I do have my ups and downs, as I'm sure as a lot of us do. I have my ups and downs, more of like the emotions of things that happen in day-to-day -day life. I usually do a pretty decent job of constructing my emotions and compartmentalizing those in a way that allows for me to still operate and focus properly, but it's been a real, real struggle as of lately. Um, and it's not like this is new. Like I've had some struggles in the past, but what happened at the beginning of the summer really, um, really spring, end of spring, early summer, it really, it really just shook me. So I'll start from the beginning. <sighs> May 10th, it was a Wednesday, Wednesday morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm doing an ab workout. At that current time, or at that, time at that point, I was on a pretty good flow. I was on a, I was on a pretty good regimen. I was in the gym four days a week. Uh, Wednesdays were my off day outside of the gym, but I took that day to go through a very extensive core workout in the morning. I was waking up at like, you know, seven o'clock every single morning. I had a really good routine and a good flow going. It's like 1030 and I'm just finishing my ab workout. And my brother's calling me. It's fairly early for him to be calling me. So I was like, you know, I kind of was like kind of surprised that he was calling me, although I had been meaning to contact him and I didn't really know if he'd wake up that early. So I was kind of surprised by the phone call. So I answered it and before he could say anything, I said, yo, I'm finishing my ab workout. Let me call you back. And he said my name to grab my attention before I hung up, which I wasn't going to hang up until he said something because like I wouldn't hang up on him. I just say, yo, let me finish my ab workout. I'll call you back. Waited for him to respond. He says, Rio. And I said, what's up? And what he said following that, just like, those words still ring in my head to this day. And he said, mommy's dead. And I just sat there and I was, I was speechless. My brother called to tell me that my mom had died. And immediately like, <sighs> my body was like numb. 
Like I heard the words and I sat there. I don't think I said like, are you serious? The disbelief was there, but I didn't express it verbally. I registered what he said to me and I knew that it was true, but I, I still had trouble wrapping my mind around it. I think I eventually said what happened and he said he didn't know. He just got the phone call from my other brother who's older than us. The brother that called me is my twin brother. For those of you that don't know, I do have a twin brother. We're fraternal twins. She was just found in her apartment. They called us and, and told us. I just remember just getting up. My brother said he'll call me back when he had a little more details. I got up and I just rolled up my ab mat. Right behind me is where I was working out. And I remember just walking it back into my storage room, just feeling like very numb and weightless. I just, I, I didn't have much feeling since then. Life has been weird, man. It's been really, really weird. I wish my mom and I were closer than we were, but we were fairly close. Although for the last like five or six months prior to her untimely passing, she didn't speak to me. My mom was very upset with me, which wasn't necessarily justified, but that just kind of how she was at times. God rest her soul, I love her dearly. She had a tendency to be very, very petty. And sometimes that extended to her family, her children. When she was mad at you, she didn't need a reason to be mad at you. In her head, in her heart of all hearts, she had her reasoning, even if it didn't make sense to anyone else. So I'll give you guys a little bit of backstory here. I started making content on this platform in 2014, March of 2014, which means next year will be my 10 year anniversary, which is crazy to say. The majority of that time, it was just something I did part-time, meaning it wasn't my full-time income. My mom, as she aged, she became more and more dependent on her children. She wasn't that old. My mom passed at 70. In my opinion, that's a very young age. It's elderly, yes, but I expected her to live much longer than she did. When I was working retail jobs, I had two days off. And those two days off was pretty standard. Sometimes it would be the same days off each week. Sometimes they would change depending on what my request was, depending on the scheduling. Whenever she called me, wanted to know what my days off were, I would tell her. And sometimes she would need things, need to go to the store, need me to take her to an appointment, take her to do something. Those were things I, were, I was able to do, mainly because I was making money consistently from my day job. However, once I went full time with making content, I had to fully focus on making content and there was no days off. So when my mom would call me and need me to do this, need me to do that, usually wasn't with some kind of heads up. It was like sometimes the same day, the day before, I have deadlines, I have this, and I was like, my, I can't do it. Over time, she just, she couldn't understand it. And no matter how much times I told her, she just couldn't understand it. And not only that, she grew up tough. Unfortunately, the way she grew up didn't necessarily allow for her to, to show the the love for her children the way that they may have wanted it to myself i talked to her about it plenty of times i wanted more from her as a mother and she struggled to do it the issues that i had primarily came down to her always requesting me i need you to do this i need this i need that but whenever she called me it was never like hey son how are you how are things she was constantly asking stuff of me but I didn't feel like she was necessarily showing any interest in my life or showing any interest in things I had going on. There was times she would call me when I'd be down. I would, you know, have a lot of anxiety. Sometimes I'd be very stressed and sometimes may feel depressed. And she never asked how I was feeling. So that bothered me. And I told her, I'm the kind of person that's going to tell you how I feel, tell you what I think. And when I told her that I needed that from her, she got upset. Over time, I kept telling her over and over and over. So it got to a point where I was like, Ma, if you can't call me to to check on me as your son, to just see how I'm doing and it never be something you need, then that's not fair to me. It's not fair for you to only call me when you need something from me. That was my tough love that I gave her and she just didn't like it. So her choice and her decision was to stop talking to me. My mom stopped talking to me in October of 2022. I sent her text messages for Christmas, her birthday. I didn't call because it wasn't the first time my mom had stopped talking to me. Her name was Betty. We called her Petty Betty. She stopped talking to me countless times and I'll be the one calling her, calling her, calling her, trying to check on her, make sure she's okay. And she would answer the phone. The second time she did it, I told her it, the third time would be the last time she did that to me because as her son, I didn't deserve that. And my family know out of all of her children, I was the one who always just did whatever she needed me to do. 
And that time I just put my foot down and said I couldn't do it, she got mad at me and she didn't speak to me. So getting that phone call, you know, it shook me to the core. I didn't blame myself because honestly, there was nothing that I could have did differently. And I do know that, I do understand that. And I accept that I did everything that I could do. You can't do what somebody won't allow you to do. It just, that's not the way life works. It's not the way people work. It's not the way relationships work. I know and I understand that. I just wish it could have been different. I just wish that there would have been some sense of resolution before something so final. That's never going to happen. That is the reality. And as much as like, you know, that frustrates me, hurts me, it is what it is and you can't change what has happened. But since that has happened, I just had trouble I've had trouble focusing and I've had trouble just keeping myself together mentally. Like I said, I've always done a decent job of properly compartmentalizing my thoughts, feelings, emotions. I, I usually do a pretty good job at that. So much so that people closest to me in my life usually come to me for advice about certain things. I'm known to have a pretty sound mind, to be very rational, level-headed easy going, laid back. That's just kind of my demeanor. It's my personality. This situation has has caused me to not really be myself. Um, and it's tough. I've been making content since then, but the, the drive, the ambition, the passion, I've been struggling to maintain that. It's like it goes up and down in waves. Some days, maybe put together three days in a row, I feel like the old me is back and I'm on fire and I'm, I'm, I'm clicking on all cylinders. My to-do list is getting made. I'm checking off boxes. I'm into the gym. You know, I'm doing the things that I need to do. Then I plateau and then I plateau for like a week, two weeks, three weeks. I'm just having trouble being consistent up here. And that's not, that's not usually me. And not only that, a month and a week, a month and two weeks after the passing of my mom. I get another phone call letting me know that my nephew had passed. A nephew that I... A nephew that was a really close nephew. Both of those calls are like calls that you just... You never want to get those kind of phone calls. Like, man, I gotta... <laughs> I don't know. Those of you that have been around for a long time, you may remember 2016, I lost a niece. This nephew I lost was her brother. So my sister lost two of her children. She's been struggling with it and she's doing her best to maintain. And with where I'm at mentally and emotionally, it's hard for me to even provide support in a way that I feel like I should because I'm not able to. If I'm being 100% honest, I'm I'm just not able to. I'm barely struggling to keep myself afloat with doing my job, which is making content. I'm struggling to even do that. I just feel very spacey. I won't say I feel lost. I think early on I did feel lost, but as time has been going, I'm feeling like I'm starting to get myself back, but I'm I'm nowhere near 100% and Honestly, I don't honestly I don't know if I'm going to be 100%. There's a saying that time heals all wounds, but I don't think that I agree with that personally. And I think we all may have a different perspective here. I don't know if time necessarily heals the wounds. It's like placing a band-aid on it and over time, you know, you're re you're removing that band-aid, but the wound is still there. Maybe it's not fresh, maybe it doesn't hurt as bad but it's still visible. The way I look at it is time doesn't necessarily heal the wound. It just makes it a little bit easier for you to live with it. It's always there. You always see it. You may even feel it, but you learn to live with it. And that's where I'm getting to. I'm getting to a point where I'm just learning to live with this, but I have to learn to live with it in a way that I'm still able to function and operate in a way that I know that I'm able to. For me, it's like, it's knowing that I can do it, need to do it, should do it. Like there's some days where I wake up and it's like, I gotta be on point today. I gotta make sure I'm getting this accomplished. I'm, I gotta write this down. I gotta check it off. I gotta make sure that I'm getting my goals accomplished. And I know I need to do it, but I still have a hard time doing it. As the other saying goes, it's easier said than done. And that's just where I'm at. You know how you will have those moments where you may be doing something but you need to go get something or do something else. 
and you got to go to another room to get it. So you stop what you're doing. You go to the other room to do what it is what you got to do or get what you got to get. You get there and then you're like, okay, what did I come here for? You grab something, go back to where you were and realize that the main thing that you went there for you didn't even get. That's been me for the past four to five months. Daily. It's not clicking, it's, it's, not, it's not locking in properly. That's been that struggle. That's been life. That's been life. Um, losing two very close family members, one being your parent. Now I have one parent left, my father. My father lives with me. Those of you that have been a part of this uh, platform for a while, a few years ago, I spoke about some of the struggles that my father had with his health and that caused him to move in with me, he's lived with me since. All of it's not easy. I'm a man in my mid thirties and I never expected to lose one of my parents that soon. I never, I never expected that. I always saw myself achieving a level of success in, in what I do so I can give more time back to my mom, so I can do more things for her, not just for her, for my family in general. And that's one of my motivations. That's one of the things that drives me. Unfortunately, I've lost track of that throughout everything that's been going on. Early on, I did, I was trying to at least use it as motivation, but it's been very, very hard to do so. Like I said, you know what you got to do, you know what you have to do but it's still not easy to do it. Again, mid thirties, I don't have any children. I always saw myself having children and having my mom be a grandmother to my children and that's never gonna happen. Yeah, it is what it is. Moving on, this platform. Like I've mentioned, I've been making videos for nine years. Through my time of making videos, of course, this, this is all my opinion. I'm not here to rant or complain. I don't wanna do, I've made videos like that in the past and that's not, the intention of this video. I'm just speaking outwardly and openly and kind of giving you guys insight into my thoughts, how I feel about my platform and basically what I intend to do with it. And looking back into things that has transpired and some of the things I've learned over, over, the, um, over the years. For those of you that have been around for or quite a while, you know, you, you would know that this platform has kind of seen its ups and its downs. And as of right now, I would say this platform is probably at one of its lowest of its lowest. And I'm gonna to work to change that. I want to work to change that. I'm gonna put effort in working to change that. It may take a little bit of time. Um, like I said, I'm still working through everything I'm dealing with. I'm very passionate about what I do. This is what I enjoy doing. Some of you may say like, hey man, you should take some time off. And actually I don't want to, I feel like that's worse. This is my job and I, in order for me to help keep my mind off of certain things, I gotta put time and effort into my job. And that's what makes me happy. So that's what I'm going to work towards doing. When I first launched this platform, most of my interests at that time was like streetwear, Jordans, snapbacks. That was primarily it. I've always been the person known for how I dress, but that was my style. It's just the streetwear style. As I've gotten older, I've started to evolve that style. I think as naturally as you should, as you age. My style, in my opinion, has evolved and gotten better, much, much, much better. Again, as it should, as you age and as you learn, as your wisdom increases, as your experience increases, you should get better. But I've been struggling to learn how to properly run a platform that develops an audience that looks forward to the content that you're creating. What I mean by that is early on, it was just mainly streetwear, street culture, sneakers and Jordans. I would say Jordans was primarily the focus of my, my content. After a few years, I would say in like 2018, 2019, I realized that that's not really what I want to focus on so much because I was getting much older and that wasn't my sole interest. I wanted to introduce more casual wear. I wanted to in introduce a little more dapper wear. Basically just have a lot more versatility into what I was doing. So when I expressed interest in not doing the unboxings and doing the things that I honestly, I didn't find value in anymore, I lost people. It was eye-opening for me, mainly because how I viewed YouTube and internet back then, it was a little naive in a sense. I was green. I was really green, really, because I thought that once a viewer hits that subscribe button and once they express support for you in the comment section and tell you how much they like what you're doing and this and that, they like you, they appreciate you, you think that no matter the content that you're making, they're still gonna appreciate it because they just like you for you. Some of you may know that's not that's not really how that works. And it's no offense to, to no one. Again, this isn't a, com a complaint, it's just, the reality, it just is, this is how the internet works. You have to give people, from the stance of a creator, You have the creator has to give an audience a reason 
to support. If you're not giving them anything, they're not going to support. There's nothing for them to support. Granted, there's going to be a small group of people that's going to support you for you no matter what you're doing. But that is the minority. That is a very small group of people. Depending on how big your audience is, that small group can range as far as the percentage goes. But again, it's still a smaller group of people. I learned that the hard way because when I thought people were just supporting me, for me, it wasn't me. It was the content that they were supporting. It was the content that they liked. And although I was the creator of it, it really had nothing to do with me. If I uploaded something that they didn't have any interest in, didn't relate to them, they weren't going to support that. As a creator, that's the that's something that's early on that's hard to understand. It's hard to like grasp that concept. It's like, wait, I thought you guys liked me for me. But no, they like you for what you're doing. They like you for the content that they enjoy. They like you for the, what they relate to. When a viewer stops finding value out of the content that you make, when the content stops resonating with them, the content doesn't relate to them or they don't relate to the content anymore, they stop being a viewer. And you can't take it personally because it has nothing necessarily to do with you. It just doesn't work for them. They don't find value. And over time, even with me being a viewer, I realized there were content creators that I wasn't watching anymore for those same exact reasons. That's just the way the internet works. As a creator, I know it's important just to create, enjoy what you create, create from the heart, and do what makes sense to you. I think when it comes to content creation, people are gonna be split. Some viewers and creators, some viewers and creators on different sides of the spectrum. One side is saying, give people what they want. It doesn't have to be what you want, you're feeding the people. As long as they're happy, then that's all that matters. You have the other side that says, you can't only give somebody what they want, you gotta create from the heart, you gotta be true to yourself, you gotta do what makes sense to you. Because at the end of the day, you have to make sure that your happiness comes first. You're gonna lose people, that's okay. You're gonna gain new people, and that's the way it works. You may lose people faster than the ones that you gain. That's okay as long as you're happy with what you're doing and you're being true to yourself. Both sides, in my honest opinion, they're not wrong. However, I lean more towards the side of being true to who I am as a creator and not just selfishly just giving myself to people, self selflessly giving myself to people because I have to be happy with what I'm doing. In reality, I probably should be somewhere in the middle. I'm trying to work towards that middle so I can give to people, but also make sure I'm maintaining my happiness. But what I can't do, which I've caught flack in the past for, I can't do something that doesn't work for me anymore just because somebody says that I should. That honestly doesn't work for me, especially when what I would be doing, I feel like will be hurting me and my platform in the process. That for me is a no-no. However, if it's not that, if it's not hurting me or my platform, but it still may not be the, the thing that I necessarily want to do, I don't mind making that exception when it comes to content, as long as I feel like it's not harming. And that's where I'm at. The platform, my content, my videos, lately they haven't performed well at all. And that's, that's been some, that's been for some time. Why I think that is, I've talked about it in the past. I've kind of mentioned that here briefly. I feel like I might be casting a net a little bit too wide or I'm not, I'm not properly living inside of my niche. But I had to take a step back and ask myself, what is my niche? What is my content for? Like, who is it serving? Who is it helping? What, what is the purpose of your content? And honestly, I had a hard time answering that question. And I think that comes down to what the root of my struggles are. Early on, this platform was just me sharing my passions, my interests. Over time, my passions and my interests have changed. They're not exactly the same. Therefore, the viewers that I've had in the beginning are not the same viewers. Now, I do think I have a select few of people that have been there for a very long time. And those are the small percentage of people I was talking about that is really, without really knowing me, they just took a liking, shown an appreciation for who I present myself to be on the internet and the person they perceive me to be, which is in reality, is the person I am. I, I'm not the kind of person that's somebody different than I am when I turn on these the, the cameras. I, I am the same exact person. Those people are still supporting. With me being older, with me being different, my interests, are not the same. My passions are not the same. I still have passion in men's style, men's fashion, and that general un umbrella. But what happens is, I think with me now being in my mid thirties, it's more about self development, growth within who I am as a person, growth within my personal style, and really just experimenting with my style. I would consider my style to be very versatile now. I'm not a biggest fan of trends. And although I never really have been, when you're younger, you focus more on trends. Again, I'm in my mid thirties now. Although I don't incorporate some trends into what I what I do in my style and my wardrobe, it's really not a focus. Don't really do a whole lot of branding 
visible branding rather. I don't really like a lot of visible branding. I think visible branding dates clothing. It doesn't make it as versatile and it doesn't have as much longevity in it. So I kind of steer away from those these days. And you know, back then I was all about that. And that's what kind of trendy fashion is now is it's, it's more fits, wider, looser, silhouettes, you'll see a lot of more branding, but I think fit is more of a trend-based thing. And that's the biggest trend is more so fit. For me, I'll play around with it. I'll experiment with it, but it's never really gonna be exactly who I am and what I do. It's, I, I think versatility and classic fits is kind of more so where I'm at and where, where, with where I lie with it all. The channel, what I wanna do, is I want to develop more of a community here. I think part of my struggle is also the lack of community, which that stems from me because I haven't done what I needed to do to establish community. And that's always been a challenge for me, mainly because my personality is more reserved. I'm not one of those people who's really out there. I'm not brash, flamboyant. I'm just, I'm not that person. I've talked about this in the past. People said I should try doing this, I should try doing that. I can't be anybody that I'm not. I just. I don't know how to be somebody other than Rio. I just don't know how to do that. I am naturally an introvert, but I do know how to be an extrovert when I need to be. I had to do that working in retail. I wouldn't be successful in retail and retail sales if I didn't know how to be an extrovert when I needed to be. So I always call to myself an introverted extrovert because I'm going to be quiet and laid back, but I know how to, I know how to turn it on when I need to. I can sometimes be very standoffish just because I may not feel that comfort in certain areas or around certain people. But once I develop that comfort, then you'll see more of me. And that's kind of where I'm at with the internet. There's a lot of aspects of the internet that I'm not necessarily comfortable with. I struggle with IG. I struggle with like being active on stories. I struggle with a lot of those things because it's not necessarily my comfort. One thing I've wanted to do for a while, and I'm gonna really, really, really try to do this, especially to help build this community, do more live streams. I've never, never done one. I would say I, I can't tell you why, but it, my why would be the lack of comfort. I gotta step outside of my comfort zone to do that. One thing I've done is I invested in some equipment that kind of helped me do that. I'm really gonna try to start doing that. So with the next couple of weeks, I may announce just doing a live stream, a really rogue live stream. So hopefully some of you guys will be there. Really just maybe a chit chat, a Q and A. I don't know what I'm gonna do in it yet, but more of like an inaugural live stream just to kind of you know get my feet wet and kind of learn the ropes and I have no clue what I'm doing but I'll, I'll figure it out. But hopefully over time we can build a community. Hopefully I can see more of you guys watching the videos, interacting on the videos. I think what may help is me making more conversational or discussion based videos, not necessarily like this or this kind of topic, but more things about style, more things about fashion, more things about men's development, personal development, those kind of things. That's what I want this platform to be more of. I'm not gonna cast that wide of a net, but I will incorporate more styles of content. For a while, I got lost in how to style content, men style this, men style that. That's still gonna be a piece of what I do because that's those are things I'm passionate about. But I gotta dig a little bit deeper to one, relate to a lot more of you because not everyone's interested in just how to wear something. But if I can express more of my personality with a lot of you guys, I think you would have more appreciation for that. And maybe we can get to know each other a little bit better that way. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. But that's the style of content that I, I want to make. I'm also gonna play around with some other styles of content, mixing in vlogs a little bit more. I do like vlogs. I do feel like my life isn't that interesting, but maybe I can mix vlogs in with other style of content I'm already making. So like I can mix in a vlog with a sit down video and make it a more interactive. I'll try that out and see how that works. I'm just gonna play around with different styles of with content over the next um, few months and then kind of see what happens there. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that. I made, what is it? You know how like um, YouTube now has memberships where well, they had it for a while. I just never use, like I never set it up. I'm setting up the memberships. Um, I don't have it right in front of me to tell you exactly how I did it. I'll probably make a community post sometime soon to kind of let you guys know about the memberships, introduce it to you guys. But hopefully you guys can, you know, um, sign up for some of the memberships. I made them all relatively affordable, but live streaming is also part of one of the memberships. That's also gonna be a, an accountability piece. So for the people that does subscribe for that membership tier, that I will do some live streams, maybe like take you guys to the gym with me, maybe like live streams or like around, around the crib when I'm doing something, maybe altering some clothing, a suit, whatever the case may be. So I think that'd be pretty cool if I do that. And just build the community. IG has now has threads. I've claimed my username, but I haven't actually used it yet. The whole thing is just weird. Again, me and social media, 
doesn't have the best relationship. I started making YouTube videos because I had a passion for what I was doing and shared it and it happened to grow. Now I got to share the current passion, who I currently am with the audience so you guys can resonate that with that and relate to that and hopefully we can develop and grow together. That's where I'm at and that's what I want. Those are my goals. Working to getting there and accomplishing everything, it may take some time. Sometimes you may see me in videos where maybe I don't look, you know, as joyful, as happy, as energetic and just understand that there may be a lot that's going on, but I'm always gonna work at improving that aspect of me and my life so I can be better in content you know, you know, for you guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for allowing me to get some of this off my chest. Thank you for sitting through this whole thing if you did. If you have any piece of advice, any feedback, if you just wanna share maybe some of your personal experiences in the comment section, I would really appreciate that. I would do my best to read every single one. If I'm able to reply to every single one, I will try. If I can't, at least I can do is give it a heart letting you know that I did see it and I read it. So acknowledging it that way. But again, I wanna thank every one of you that's been here and supported me. As a creator, sometimes it's hard to see that, especially when you feel like you should be further than you are. Sometimes you gotta take a step back and appreciate where you're currently at and give that your all so you can get to where you feel like you should be. And that's something I try to remind myself of as often as possible. Anyway, thank you guys again. I look forward to making some new content. Oh, really quick, I have like maybe three or four videos that's literally been sitting for months that I haven't posted. So I'll probably post those and then get some new stuff rolling out. More content will be up soon. And I'm gonna try to be as consistent with this content as I can. Um, and that's a goal, at least one video a week. It may take me some time to get there, but once I am there, hopefully I can stay there. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna catch you guys on next video. Peace.